Jane. Well, you are our first guest. And now that we have you, we're so excited. We're able to get, we're like, we got to get her on, right? So we got audio, we got video. Uh, we were, you know, Amber was telling a great story about you. Uh, Robin was talking about the importance of the hygienist in the dental practice. So we understand that you have a story um, to share as well as just your passion. So uh, yeah, I mean, welcome. And uh, the floor is kind of yours. We, we'd love to hear, hear you share your passion. Thank you so much, and I am truly honored to, to be able to be here and hang out with you guys today. I do want to share a personal story. Um, I'm sure Amber probably already told you that I met her and got to hear her story and was really empowered to spec, step up and do more around oral cancer awareness because of Amber. And as I was learning more about it and starting to utilize that uh, platform as my on my platform to talk to dental teams and from the stage I was doing lots and lots of research so with that said I ran across a light the oral ID light just so you know I don't get any kickbacks from oral ID or any company like that uh, but this specific light I actually used and had the opportunity to share at a live event here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I came home that night and I was so excited and it was a Friday night and my husband and I had a glass of wine and I was telling him all about my day. And I said, Steve, did you know that oral cancer is the only cancer that's on the rise? And Steve, did you know that uh, there are people who aren't even diagnosed until later stages, stage four, stage five. Steve, we really have a chance to save patients' lives. And there's this light that you can use. And if you have abnormal cancer cells, it will fluoresce back black to you. You know what, Steve, that light is in my car. Let me run, go get it. And I want to do an oral cancer screening for you right here. So picture this Friday night in our den and uh, with two glasses of wine, you know, he had a glass and I had a glass and I said, okay, lay down. <laughs> and I, st I put on all my garb, you know, my protective eyewear and I shined my light. And my husband he said he knew when he saw the look on my face. I was surprised to see that he had abnormal cells fluorescing back. Doesn't mean he had cancer, right? But we know that abnormal cells are not a good thing. So all weekend, I did the nagging wife. You got to call. You got you to gotta see your dermatologist. You've got to you got to do something. We got to call the dentist. Promise me you're going to call first thing uh, on Monday morning. And I suggested that he call the dermatologist just because my husband has that ruddy skin and had already had several other uh, skin cancers, if you will. And that's who he called. And of course, imagine when he picks up the phone and he says, Hey, yeah, this is Steve Sanders, and my wife, well, she's a hygienist, and she shined this light, and she told me I had to call you today. <laughs> well, luckily, they got him in the following day on Tuesday, and yes, he did have stage three uh, cancer within a month. We, we could tell it was going to be kind of serious because within a month, we had a surgeon and a plastics guy, one to do the removal and one to do the, the uh, refurbish, if you will. And he lost more than 50% of his lower lip. And those doctors lined up to get it done on a Thursday and then a Friday, back-to-back -back surgeries. And, you know, it's the good news is we found it when we found it. Um, the bad news is he lost 50% of his lower lip, more than 50% of his lower lip. And I will tell you, he does not kiss the same, but that's okay. We keep practicing. And that really just 
took my passion for oral cancer to the next level, right? I never thought I'd find it in my own family, in my own home, in my own den, oh, my sweet husband. So that's what I kind of wanted to share with you guys today is how we can identify cancer at the earliest opportunities because we know that if we can only diagnose oral cancer between stage one and stage two, we have an 83% chance of our patients' lives being saved. So think about this. We can, who else looks in their mouth? I mean, really, think that through for a minute. When was the last time you went to the doctor's office and they wanted to take a look inside your, your mouth? And so I want to give you guys that are listening, if you're a healthcare provider, I want to give you uh, an action plan of some things that you can take home today and do right away uh, with your team. I also want to share with you a couple of great things that you can do um, besides this action plan, right? So having a nice little visual aid so I have this one. It helps me uh, when the patient's holding it, I can stand behind the patient and do a head and neck screening. I also utilize the real estate on the backside and I, I, this is the HbA1c. That's super important. But here's, here's something else I wanted to share with you because this, this is not new stuff, y'all. Let me tell you, this article was written in, come on, find me a date, 2016. 2016, the University of Louisville School of Dentistry researchers found that P. gingivalis, what do we know about P. gingivalis? That is one of our periopathogens, that P. gingivalis is present in 61% of patients with um, esophageal squamous cell carcinoma. And did you also know, watch this, this is another one. Did you also know that for every one millimeter of interproximal alveolar bone loss, our patients have a fourfold increased risk of head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. So now who is looking at our patients' alveolar bone loss? That's us. So here's kind of the action plan I wanna share with you guys. Um, actually, let me back up a step. Let's talk about sex. Hopefully y'all all like sex too. I like it with my husband. So uh, let's talk about sex. Did you know that oral cancer, the number one cause of oral cancer is HPV? And here's what I did as I was researching more about HPV. There's over 200 uh, forms of human papillomavirus. I went and was reading on the CDC's website, and it said that they suggested, how did they phrase it? In order for you to lower your human papillomavirus and oral pharyngeal risk, you needed to use a condom or a dental dam. Now, those of you that are in dentistry like me, right, you think of the dental dam as, as this little piece that we use for isolation so that we don't get things into the patient's throat. So that's what I thought of. And I was like, how is the public, right? The CDC speaking to the public. How is the public going to use a dental dam to lower their risk for HPV? <laughs> Let me investigate that. So I Googled it. I even Googled it again this morning to make sure it's still there. And it is. So here's what I want you to do for fun. Google what is a dental dam? When you Google it, this does not come up. <laughs> Something else comes up. It's, it's like this, but it's a little bit longer. And um, they're recommending that our young people, our teenagers who love, you know, to experiment with some sexual things, they're recommending that they take this, and put it over some certain places to prevent the spread <laughs> of HPV. Woo! Now I can tell you, 
uh, that's kind of hard to manage, right? I, I can't imagine that we really think that young people who are primarily the ones getting HPV, that young people are going to be able to do this while they're experimenting with each other. So, yeah, that's not what I think is in our patient's best interest. Instead, I would rather see us have some more critical conversations about HPV with our patients. And I know there's there's a handful of people out there that are like, I work at a dental office. I, I can't talk to them about HPV. Yes, you can. Because that is the one thing that's really pushing oral cancer to, to go on the rise. So it's actually, it's the root cause. So we need to be talking about HPV. So here's a couple of things here, a couple of little action items. If you have a pen and piece of paper, please, please, please write this down. If you're with your dental team, I would love it if you guys could find a time during your next team meeting, get everybody calibrated, share some of this great information about P. gingivalis and HPV and maybe get you a laminated copy of this to have in your operatory so you can begin the conversation as you're doing your head and neck screenings. So get team calibrated. That's going to be first. Get some of these great tools, visual aids, if you will, and have them right there in your operatory ready to share with your patients. And also think about adding to your medical history, adding the HPV question. A lot of medical histories don't have that question on there. Have you been diagnosed with HPV? Um, because we know that that patient has an elevated risk of head and neck screaming cell carcinomas. Uh, then also, when you're reviewing your patient's radiographs, be watching for that alveolar bone loss, right? So when they have alveolar bone loss, they most likely, not the only thing, but most likely it's periodontal disease related. So that P. gingivalis, remember P. gingivalis and oral cancer, they kind of go hand in hand. So watch for that bone loss. So let's review your action plan. I hope you got to write this down. Get with your team. Get everybody calibrated on understanding how we can do an exam for our patients. Use some visual aids in your operatory. Also add the question to your medical history form. And then I want you to monitor that bone loss and remember that when you see that alveolar bone loss and they have periodontal disease, they have a fourfold risk of squamous cell head and neck carcinoma. So hopefully you'll find this super helpful. Um, what do you guys think, Robin? Oh, okay, we're back. <laughs> What do you think about that? You think we can do that? Absolutely, we can do that. Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. I love, I love the way you educate, Emmy. I mean, you bring humor into it, but then all the facts and everything. And I think that's so important. I think it gets the attention of the teams when you do that. It really does. And these are uncomfortable conversations, right? So yeah. when you go back and you think about patients who come to the dentist, most patients would rather die than go to the dentist, mm -hmm. right? Some patients would rather go see a gynecologist or a proctologist instead of going to a dentist. So it's a kind of scary thing, right? But here's the deal. If we, they're, they're just humans. If we can have those critical conversations with our patients and begin to open the doorway that it's not something shameful, right? We, we like sex. Raise your hand. I like sex. I hope y'all do too. <laughs> only, only on the social thon, everybody. At 645 Pacific <laughs> and 945 Eastern, are you going to hear sex being talked about on a Friday by the famous Emmy Sanders? And listen, I know we're kind of chuckling about this, but Emmy, I wanted to ask you. So, you know, there's the, there's the influence of the patients and getting them to see this or what have you. Can you also talk a little bit as a hygienist? Um, of what hygienists out there can do for the team, like for their team in the dental practice, right? For maybe there, maybe there's a dental practice out there 
that doesn't take this as seriously as they should, not because they want to, but because, you know, the craziness of a dental practice, I get all these things going on and what have you. You work a lot with dental teams. Mm -hmm. So can you share your perspective as a hygienist of maybe some tips and some things that can do if there's somebody out there watching that, you know, wants their practice to, to, you know, take these diagnoses more seriously, build it into their workflow, something along those lines. Yeah, so here's the obstacle that we see really common at Inspired Hygiene, that there are hygienists and, and, and all dental professionals, not just hygienists, even dentists, that are not super confident with pathology. Mm -hmm. And I get it. I, too, am one of those people. And I strongly encourage, if you are not confident with that, utilize something else. You can have an oral ID light. I, I like this one just because it fits right in your lab pocket. They're all, I'm not, again, I, I'm not here to pimp a certain type of product. They're all great. This one does fit in your pocket, but you shine this light, those abnormal cells come back and we're talking a minute. It doesn't take very long. And a lot of people, if you could just share with your patient what you're doing as you're doing it, I find that very impactful. And here's why. Have you started doing something new and patients are, or excuse me, let me back up a second. Have you started doing something and telling patients about it? And they're like, well, you've never done that before. Yes, we've always done it. You just, we didn't tell you we were doing it. So use this as a great opportunity to tell your patients what you're looking for. What are the signs? Who's at risk? So try a light. You know also that an oral cancer screening is a part of your exam process. Yep. So the periodic exam and the comprehensive exam, it's a part of that. But we also know that if you have a device, you can make that a billable service. I think it's the 0481, let me see, it's the 0431. You can use that code for, a, for using a device. Not all insurance companies will cover that code for your patient. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Not all sealants were covered at the beginning. I've been doing mm -hmm. this a long time. I was here before sealants were, right? So sealants weren't covered in the beginning. The more we utilize this code, the better chance we have that insurance companies are going to start covering it. Yep. Make that fee something simple that patients can say yes to, $20. I think practice boosters, they recommend on their website like $30 to $50 is a is a good charge for that but make it something affordable that patients can't say no to yeah oral cancer is one of the most devastating cancers out there um the fact that you can't blow a bubble after s some oral cancers that that's a problem yeah uh amber you know it it's a devastating cancer i her story about not being able to pick up her child but I mean, I can't imagine, yeah. right? So those are a few things we can do and begin the conversation about HPV, begin the conversation because that's what's, what's uh, facilitating this, this drive in oral cancers. Well, that was uh, a long answer. No, it's a, it's a, it's a good one. Perfect. And uh, what we don't want to do is we don't want to prevent, you know, you and your husband from continuing to practice that kissing, you know, it's Friday, you've got us all off on the right foot, you know, so um, we so much appreciate you, uh, you know, Robin, Amber, and anything for Emmy is she, uh, what a great way to start this. I love it. Well, I have two things to say. One is I think Emmy should kick off every social prom. <laughs> That was my thought. <laughs> and then the other job, thing Amber. Is I love the tools you talk about, Emmy, to give the hygienist when they're doing their exams because I know as a practice management consultant, anytime we try to implement anything, we find if we provide tools, it, it's implemented more readily. So I think the tools you're talking about, the visuals you're talking about, all of that, I think is really important too. 
So on a side note, Emmy, my daughter is doing tech support on the side. And she said, I got to Google this dental dam. <laughs> and she, <laughs> and she Google it. And she said, it's kind of scary. Said, that looks it's like not comfortable. <laughs> yeah, and that's the CDC telling our kids how to protect themselves from HPV. I'm like, well, you know, and it's a conversation. Like I've told you before, when, when she was of age and it was time for us to go, I went to the pediatrician when they were basically telling her it was time for the shot. And I sat there quietly. I said, please tell us what this is about. And I was basically testing the doctor to see if she was going to educate properly. And, and she gave us the whole spiel and she did wonderful. And I, I looked at my daughter, I said, it's your choice. This is, you are much more educated on most people on this, whatever you'd like to do. And of course she chose to take it, but it was just funny. She's like, this is not how the conversation normally goes. I was like, well, we're not normal people. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I just love everything that you do, Emmy. You know that. Um, I'm just so glad we crossed paths in Orlando and are forever, forever friends. Forever friends. I had to meet you in what I thought we were in California. I met you the first time. And I, I had to fly to California to meet my neighbor that lives five minutes down the road where from my were house. We? I, we'll have to figure out where we were. We were somewhere. Yeah, I, I don't know where <laughs> we were, but it's okay. And just so you guys know, I am so grateful for what you guys are doing for the patients and oral cancer calls. I hope to always be here to support you. And if you don't mind, we at Inspired Hygiene, we would love to kick off your donations with $500. So I hope that will help awesome. some family somewhere. Um, Inspired Hygiene is, is behind you all the way. Y'all are so wonderful there. Thank you to you, Thanks, Rachel Wall. Thank you to Rachel, you and the team. Yes, she she's our founder, fantastic, a huge advocate for oral cancer calls. And uh, we we wanted to do that for you. Thank you. You guys are a blessing. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Hey, Emmy, uh, always always a pleasure. <laughs> I told you. Yeah, I told you. Robin said we couldn't go live today. Like you know, she like had to go get her Kleenex. You know, we wanted to make sure she was good and ready to go. And um, you know, like you always are. You know, bringing bringing so much and so much value to, to this. So we, we love having you. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful Friday and um, good luck with that practicing. Yeah. Practice kissing and talking about sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>